message title for today is godliness. It's today's message. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Matthew 6 33. It said, but seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Praise God. What people fail to understand is that in life, the first thing you seek for is Christ. In Christ, every other thing you need will be added. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5 verse 1. He said, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Underline the word, followers of God as dear children. Praise God. Matthew chapter 5. You have to be fast today. Matthew Matthew 5 verse 48. He said, be ye therefore perfect. Is it in your Bible? Be ye therefore perfect. Are you there? Even as your father which is in heaven is what? Perfect. Did you see that in your Bible? Are you sure it's there in your Bible? Be ye therefore what? Perfect. Even as your father which is in heaven is what? Perfect. Amen. Praise God. Proverbs. We have a lot of Bible references for today. Proverbs chapter 4. Let's look at verse 18 and 19. He said, but the path of the just is as a shining light. That shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Verse 19. The way of the wicked is as dark. Is as what? Darkness. Is it in your Bible? They know not at what they stumble. The message for today is titled Godliness. Most times it's the kind of message people don't like to hear. But that is what you will hear today. Amen. Amen. Even if you put cotton wool inside your ear, the Holy Ghost will remove it. Uh. <laughs> Godliness is the practice, write it down, of conforming to the laws and wishes of God Almighty. Godliness is the practice of conforming to the laws and wishes of God Almighty. When you see somebody who conforms to the laws and wishes of God Almighty, that is godliness. It means making the word of God a standard for your life. That's godliness. Another meaning of godliness, godliness means moral uprightness. I'll give you a lot of notes for today. You'll write up to five pages. Yes. Are you ready? Okay. Godliness means moral uprightness. When you see somebody who is right with God, someone who is upright with God, you can term it godliness. Another meaning of God in the stick it. Godliness is striving to live like God. Striving to live like God. That is godliness. Remember where we read he said our father is perfect. We also need to be what? Perfect. Godliness is striving to live like God. Take another meaning of godliness. Godliness is desperation to please God. When you see somebody who is desperate at all times, not to please men, but to please God. That's another meaning of godliness. Is desperation to please God.
take another definition of godliness. Most times, godliness is not necessarily a state of perfection, but a crave for perfection. Most times, godliness is not necessarily a state of perfection, but a crave for perfection. You know what it means? The person might not be perfect. But in the person's heart, he's fighting by all means to be perfect. Take another definition of godliness. Are you sure you're ready for today? Godliness is hunger and passion for righteousness. Godliness is hunger and passion for righteousness. Are you here today? Praise God. If people fight sin, if people fight sin the way they fight witches and wizards, the world would have been a better place to live in. Did somebody hear that? Every witchcraft power die by fire, some assault, catch fire, burn, go down. I bury you. Die, 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 die. The way people fight witches and wizards, if that is the way they fight sin in their life, the world would have been a better place to live in. When you talk about godliness, it is synonymous to holiness. Praise God. I say praise God. Are you sure you are taking my note for today? How many of you are taking the note for today? Praise God. John chapter 8, let's look at verse 32. John 8, 32. He said, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Make you free. He said, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Amen. I say amen. amen. So get ready. John 9, 4. That is why I say we need to be fast. I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day. Is it in your Bible? The night cometh when no man can walk. Is it in your Bible? Check well. Check well. I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is what? Day. He said the night cometh when no man can walk. Do you know the meaning of that Bible reference? I will do the work of him who have sent me during the daytime. Not when the night cometh. Do you understand that scripture? Now, let me make it clear to you. When the Bible talks about the day and the night, it's talking about life and death. Because even at your old age, you can still preach if you want to preach. So being old is not an excuse for not preaching. Uh, so when he say, I will do the work of him who have sent me, are you following me? Now that it's still day, that when it is night, when the night come, time has passed. He's talking about life and death. It means if you don't do what you're supposed to do now, it is not in the grave that you will do it. Praise God. Is somebody understanding me at all? Yes, Praise the Lord. Can I hear somebody shout a better hallelujah? hallelujah? Now, when we talk about godliness, godliness should be a lifestyle for you as a Christian. In your communication with people, in your interaction with people, people should look at you and see God inside of you. In fact, another meaning of godliness, godliness means a replica of God. When you say somebody is godly, you should look at the person and see a human being that is carrying God inside of him or her. Can I hear somebody shout a better hallelujah? Things you experience when you are not godly, write it down. When you see people who don't have God inside of them, there are things 
they are likely to experience. When you take this note, it makes you understand the benefits of salvation. It makes you understand the benefits of getting close to God. And as my message proceeds today, you will also understand that you are godly and you are born again. It's not a reason for you to say, I cannot be tempted. As my message proceeds, you will now understand the more you go close to God, the more you have more temptations. Am I talking to somebody here? Amen. Things you experience when you are not godly. When you are not godly means God is not inside of you. You don't live a life that is pleasing to God. You live your life anyhow you want to live your life. Look at the things that will happen, number one. Number one, sin becomes your daily bread. That's the first thing. When you are not godly, number one, sin becomes your daily bread. Number two, your conscience becomes dead. When I say your conscience becomes dead, what I mean is that anything you want to do, you don't think about it, you just do it. In fact, you have no conscience. There are people who their conscience is already dead. It's no longer alive. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody here. Number three, sinful nature makes you to operate in wickedness. There are people that their life is full of wickedness. Every day they wake up, if they have not carried out an evil activity, their mind is not at rest. You know why? They are not godly. When you are godly, before you do anything, the Holy Ghost will minister to you. Am I talking to somebody here? So number three, sinful nature makes you to operate in wickedness. How can a woman use charm and charm the husband in the house? And yet on Sunday you will see them in church wearing clothes and they are in the woman's wing. Am I talking to somebody? It's wickedness. That is not a sign of godliness at all. Am I talking to somebody here? If you are here, somebody say I'm here. I have come to understand there are lots of people who claim to know God, but yet they don't know whom God is. When you say you are a daughter of God, you are a son of God, you are a child of God, it should show in your character and your behavior. If God cannot be seen in your character, in your behavior, then forget it, you don't know him. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Look at the number 14 you experience when you are not only number 4. You live your life to please yourself and to please the devil himself. You live your life to please yourself and the devil himself. It means that the life you are living is not to please God. You are only interested in your own self and the, your own master, which is the devil himself. Praise the Lord. If you are here, somebody shout, I'm here. Amen. Amen. Draw close to God. The easiest way to be godly and the easiest way to be a true follower of Christ is to hear the word of God and obey the word Am of I God. Am I talking to somebody here? Are you there? To hear God's word and to obey his word. Amen. I said amen. Can I hear somebody shout a louder amen? You go to a club in the night and when you go there, you strip yourself naked to dance in the public, to get money from the public. And after you dance in the club, naked yourself, show them part of your body, then they pay you off in the morning. Then on Sunday, you are in the church and you are even a member of a choir and you carry a microphone to sing. You are, a, you are under a curse because you are confused. Am I talking to somebody here? Are you, are you really hearing what I'm saying here? Are you here? You're under a curse. You don't know what you're doing. Godliness. When you want to serve God, serve God in totality. Serve God with your heart. Someone will go to a native doctor, collect charms. All the charms you collected is in your house. And yet you come to church. When it's time to bless the mantle or bless the water or the oil, you are still there to still carry the water and the oil. 
it shows how confused you are. Am I talking to somebody here? Yet you hear a lot of people say, oh, I've been praying concerning a particular problem or a challenge, and yet I've not. How can you see answers? God is not a fool. God cannot be mocked. Amen. I didn't hear you. I say amen. If you are here, somebody shout, I am here. Can I go on? Or you don't like my message? I should go on. Amen? I say amen. How can you see people living their life anyhow they want to live their life? Living their life anyhow they want to live their life. Everywhere there are evil activities and demonic atrocities is going on. You are there. The evil that men do lives with them. Where we first read today in Matthew 6, 33, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He says, every other thing shall be added unto you. I can beat my chest and tell you, anything you are looking for on earth is in Christ. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody here. Everything you need to make your life successful is in Christ. The reason why many of us are out of blessings is because we are not ready to follow Christ with the whole of our heart. Am I talking to somebody here? You borrowed money from somebody. You come to church every week. You went to meet somebody to collect money from the person. And you told the person, in one month time, I'll give you the money. One month I've gone, the person come to collect his or her money. And you start speaking in tongue. You are mad. How can I talk? These are things we do. Then people who you think they are unbelievers, they begin to look at you. And begin to wonder, what kind of Christian are you? Where is your Christianity from? From which planet? The time you were collecting the money from him or her, you get good voice. You were down to the earth. You knelt down. You were even crying. And now the person who you collected money from has come to say, okay, the money I give you, I'll come to collect it. You start speaking in tongues. Are you okay? Are you speaking in tongues that the person should forget his or her money? I don't know when I'm talking to somebody here. If you're here, somebody say I'm here. Let me tell you something. Christianity cannot be analyzed by your going to church every Sunday. Even demonic agents, they go to church. Can I preach in this service? Your Christianity cannot be overemphasized by your being in church every Sunday. No. Christianity have gone beyond talking. Christianity is divinity at work in humanity. Amen? Christianity is divinity at work in humanity. Divinity is God. Humanity is man. If you say you are a born again Christian and life of God is not seen in you, you are making a mistake. Praise God. I say praise amen. God. Amen. Can I talk? I say amen. amen. A young girl is, is very terrible. So, so terrible. Before one week has gone, you have slept with more than 15 men. Rotational cycle. Are you there? Before the next week, seven other men have slept with you. Fourteen. In a month, you can count up to thirty. Then when they are up to thirty years or thirty something years, no husband, their dressing will change. You see them put on gown. Look for any church where they feel miracle is happening. When they walk in, when they are praying, you see them shedding tears. Crying as if the, the whole world is on top of their head. And when they pray for six months, four months, and no answer, they move to another church. Going to all the whole churches you know cannot save you. There's a kind of life and character you will have. Even though you pray from now until when Jesus will come, you will not see the answer. Can I talk Hebrews to chapter 12. Let's read verse 13 and 14. Hebrews 12, 13 and 14. And make straight path for your feet, lest that 
which is lame be turned out, out, out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men, in verse 14. Follow peace with all men, are you there? And holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. When you are not holy, you can't see God. Though. If you like, pray, jump from the highest mountain, come down. You will remember where you are. So write number two. I say four things to note about sin, number two. Sin is enjoyable, but inside it is poison that will defile you. Sin is enjoyable, but inside it is poison that will defile you. Praise the Lord. I didn't hear I say praise the Lord. Can I hear somebody shout a better hallelujah? Number three, as a sinner, Satan does not show you the end of where you are going until you arrive there. <laughs> are you there? Are you really understanding me? As a sinner, Satan does not show you the end of where you are going until you arrive there. Do you understand that? Satan will not tell you the disadvantages. He will only show you the advantages. That's why when you see people who want to do blood money, Satan will only show them what they will get. He will not tell them the repercussion in time to come. I hope you are taking notes today. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Someone came to my office some time ago. He said, prophet, I've made up my mind to do ritual. I say, eh. he said, eh. I say, okay, then why are you here? He said, I just came for you to help me tell God. <laughs> help me tell God I've made a decision and I'm not going back. Amen? Then I said to him, congratulations. Are you there? I said, congratulations. Because the devil has finally welcomed you into his family. Amen? I said, Amen. So, as a sinner, Satan does not show you the end of where you are going till you arrive there. That's why the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end is destruction. John chapter 10 verse 10, he said, the thief cometh not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have this life for... Go to number four. Anyone Satan attacks badly with a sinful nature, Check very well. The person have a hidden potential inside of him or her. That's number four. I take it again. Anyone Satan attacks badly with a sinful nature, check very well. The person have a hidden potential inside him or her. When you see people that is being attacked by the devil so badly, check well. There is a hidden potential. There is something inside of them. There is something God has deposited inside of that person. So the reason why the devil is striking is to kill that potential. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Example of such character in the Bible is the story of Solomon. Are you there? First King chapter 3 verse 3. You will see where Solomon loved God. Take it down when you go home study it. First King 3.3. 3. The Bible says, And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burned incense in high places. An example of this number four is somebody like Solomon. In First King 3.3, 3, the Bible said, Solomon loved the Lord. Then in First King chapter 4, verse 29 and 34. First King 4, 29 and 34. You will now see where God gave Solomon wisdom. Are you there? You will see where God gave Solomon wisdom. Then when you go to 1 Kings chapter 11, from verse 1 to 11, you will now see where Solomon went after strange women. Are you there? 1 Kings 11 from verse 1 to 11. The first one I say, he loved God. The second one, God blessed him with wisdom. Then when they have seen that potential in him, look at the third one, 1 Kings 11 from verse 1 to 11. He went after strange women. When you go home and study further, you will discover that Solomon ended up as a drunkard. Are you there? Yes, sir. 
Am I talking to somebody here? He ended up as a drunkard. To the level that even strange women, they turned away his heart from God. Are you aware? Strange women turned his heart from God. To the level that Solomon himself began to worship other gods. Am I right? Despite how far he has gone with God. Praise God. Number four, I said anyone Satan attacks badly with a sinful nature, check very well. The person has a hidden potential inside of him or her. Look at Samson. Look at Delilah. It's the same thing. You can write it down, Judges chapter 16. When you go home, study it. They have seen what is carrying inside of him and they know where he's going to. What happened? They used the woman to set trap for him. Come and see how the mighty has fallen. Praise God. Let me tell you, sin is enjoyable, though, but it's a trap. It's like poison. When you get into it, it defies you. you've not given your life to Christ it is time for you to surrender your life to Christ. Living a life without Christ is a life full of crisis. If you have not given your life to Christ and you know that if you die now you will not make heaven. Pray this prayer with me say after me say Lord Jesus say I come before you I confess my sin I know I am a sinner forgive me my sin accept me once again into the body of Christ Wash me clean. Bless me. Open new doors for me. And accept me into your family once again. In Jesus' mighty name. If you know you prayed that prayer, you are now born again. Just forget the old things. Old things are passed away and all things have become new. Make the word of God a standard for your life. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. If you know you are now born again, send me a message. I'll be praying for you. The Lord will bless you on every side and increase you on every side. The devil have nothing to offer, but everything you have and everything you need in life, it is in Jesus. And with Jesus, you will get it. The Lord bless you. I believe you've been blessed with the program you just watched on air. My name is Prophet Chooks Tony Ojena Moore. You can locate our church at Divine Confirmation Ministry, plot 358 behind former Crush Rock Quarry Gate, Pape Abuja. Join us at our transforming service, Hour of Freedom and Liberation every Wednesday by 5 p.m. and every Sunday by 8.30 a.m. As you join us, have a prayer the request. Lord bless you. If you have a challenge or a problem, the phone number is on the screen. You can join us. Send your prayer request. We'll be praying for you.